Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is Game God Fluent, bringing you episode 33 of Let's Play Queen's Wish the Conqueror. Just adjusting my sound in the headphones here. Um, let's go ahead and load episode 32. We're in Fort Haven. Uh, we checked back in. Um, there's a limit to how much of each resource you can store. We know that. So today, uh, we're going to we upgraded the fort and we have more resources coming in. And since we did that, we actually have one iron, two quicksilver, twelve stone, and three wood. Once we get the next batch in. We can go ahead and build something in one of the forts. So what I want to do today, um, I guess everybody's got the right stuff. We don't need like um, anything from here. Let's go ahead and. Uh, let's see if we can pass off more uh, resources at Great Port. I don't think it's been a day yet, though. All right, the budget is run out. Um, okay, so let's. What was I going to do today? Let's head to Nakala. And check the journal. Um, why hasn't that been a completed quest yet? We already rebuilt Fort West Bay. Ruins of Castle Andesite. Andesite Letters. Flint. Hit. Um, the Mist Maze for Shaman Alton of Nakala. An intensely haunted place far northwest. Seven Oaks Mine for Viscount Taylor, Merchant Master of the Isaac. It's north of Nakala, infested with monsters. That can produce iron for Haven. There's an old Drake in the Fen. The Haunted Fen north of Fort Muck. Runner promises she will teach you more about the Ukash. There's an abandoned Ukash, Ukatish town named Gellum southwest of the Myrefangs. Myrelings have been attacking passing caravans. Your goods be, could be passed through the area more safely. Let's just explore. Most roads in the Ukat are deeply rutted mud. These roads are gravel. Some of the few proper roads in this land. They need to be for the sake of the ore caravans. The caravans carry ore south to the Kala docks and bring back stone, medicine, and other luxuries that make life in the swamp more tolerable. You pass a, <laughs> you pass a line of wagons carrying ore and iron bars from the mines to the north. This is the sole export of the Ukatish and the sole source of their wealth and security. They watch you as they pass, fascinated. They are young, and none of them have ever, ever seen a Havenite. <clears throat> East Myrfang's Fort Muck. Yeah, let's get to Fort Muck. And go ahead and get to rebuilding that. Nothing there. Um... I don't know if we have to stay on the path. You approach the door to this rotting farmhouse. Something is inside. You hear shouting and thumping around. Open the door. You open the door an inch. Then someone slams it again against it and knocks it wide open. You see a mage of Haven, an old bedraggled man, veteran of the road. He runs behind you. Then a bunch of Myrlings pour out of the building hot on his heels. Okay. We can handle this, I think. Flingers and bashers. Ooh, and a touched. We're going to go ahead and stun the touched. Nice. 
Um, Lauren, shoot. Um, come up here and whirlwind. Oh, there's the Haven Sage. We've got to keep him alive. Um, kill the touch soon. Oof. Uh, we'll just kill the touched. Get these bashers now. Bad, you can't range the whirlwind. <laughs> 39 on the Myrling Flinger. Um, well, let's use some ranged. Let's make him bleed. Oh, the Haven Sage just took a hard hit. Terrence, um, kill. Go ahead and heal the sage. Heal for 37. Her healing is getting wicked good. With all those bonuses. Oh, there's a basher here. Fear. Okay, let's go ahead and lead him. Fear removed. Take on this threat here. Here is it removed? Patricia. I keep calling her Patricia. Lauren. Here. Terrence. Ah. Um. Let's go ahead and stun the basher. We have a lot of abilities now at our disposal. We're really doing well. Um. I'm really enjoying the play styles and stuff we're building. It's just turning out very really good. Uh, now that we have the inspiring cries and stuff, and the bonuses to curses, and uh, the stunts that we have, and all that good stuff, we really are getting pretty decently strong. Go ahead and shoot the flingers, I guess. Fear. Send Elspeth in there after them. Dang. this pretty well. Ah, oh, keeps evading. Get back here. More fear. Um, it's a kill. That wire fang wireling flick is gonna get away. No, it's attacking. Its fear was removed fight to the death apparently there we go the battle won the man you rescued dusts himself off he runs up and shakes your hand enthusiastically thank you oh thank you i am jeremiah bushwick on my way to fort muck to serve as sage when i was bushwhacked i will rush to my post now i hope to see you he finally notices your insignia oh the prince what an honor i'm sure i'll see you soon he rushes off toward the safety of the fort you are close to the ruins of Fort Muck, one of Haven's seven outposts on Sacramentum. It was abandoned decades ago when the Calamity forced your mother to withdraw most of Haven's soldiers. The logs of the fort have been rotting ever since. It will take a lot of work to repair it. Yet, Haven seems up to the task. East of the fort, you see a huge camp. General Ajax has been sneaking workers and supplies into the Ukatish lands. A lot of them. Enough that some of the Ukatish must have known that he was doing it. Interesting. They are camped to the east of the fort ruins now, waiting for your orders. Hmm. Go ahead and F3 and come down here and give some orders. 
You approach a band of workers, some Haven and some Ukatish, who are camped outside Fort Muck. They are waiting for the order to begin work. They tell you to go to the middle of the tech of the camp and talk to Chief Clive. You approach the camp. There are a bunch of Haven soldiers huddled, huddled together, shivering and dripping with rain. They are not enjoying the climate. One rises, approaches you and kneels. She says, Chief Clive reporting. General Ajax took the initiative and sent us ahead. We're ready to reclaim Fort Muck. We just need the order. How did you get here? It wasn't difficult. Many of the Ukatish in this region miss Haven. It's up north if they don't care for us as much. What will the Ukatish think of us for building this fort? She shrugs and grins. Doesn't matter. It's our land by treaty. Uh, don't do anything yet. Oh, all right. You're the prince. We'll just stay here and be wet. Um, can I actually go in first? And no, there's nothing for me to do here. Um, I give the order. Get to work. Clive turns and says, get to work, boys. The bedraggled soldiers and craftsfolk give a hearty cheer. Then they pour into the ruins of Fort Muck. You can now collect resources for mines you control in this region. You can now recruit Ukatish characters in your forts. Nice. They have new special abilities to recruit a character into the fort and press the edit party button. Sweet. Here we are, home away from home. You enter the freshly rebuilt Fort Muck. Workers and soldiers are everywhere. There's a lot of work to be done. Rotten logs need to be replaced. Mud needs to be shoveled out of buildings. It's a mess. As you enter, the guards and workers turn and kneel. They get Then they get back to work. They are hugely enthusiastic about their work, restoring the haven all it lost. Their being in an isolated fort deep in Ukatish lands doesn't concern them. All right. Even townsperson, all is well. Whoop. Back. Even Lancer. Hey, Avon is back. Let's go have a look around the fort. We're always vigilant. We will rebuild. Okay, so as soon as we get uh, a new order, a new order of resources in go ahead and start building something here plenty of room it seems here we have the typical prison orders prince we will rebuild alright cool what is that stairway up Haven will return. Alright, let's come here, get to know the people. Meet the chief of Fort Mock, snuck in here by General Ajax. She has already settled into her office. She is an old woman, far more frail than you would expect in a perilous region like this one. Yet when she rises and kneels, she is spry. She is truly thrilled, thrilled to be here. Welcome, Prince. I am Chief Clive of Fort Mock. I am honored to be here and ready to give you my report. Alright, give me your report. We have retaken Fort Muck. The Ukatish gave no objections. None at all. Our supplies and workers traveled on their roads without objection from the locals. You should know, Prince. I served as chief here before, long before you were born. You have served here before? I was the chief here when the calamity happened. I followed the queen's orders to leave. I was the last out the gate. Oh, the tales I could tell. When I learned Haven was returning, I insisted that I resume my old post. Why did you want to come back? I am a Havenite. When we leave a place, it is as victors. We were forced out. Since then, I have wanted to return to cure some of our shame. Aren't you too old? She is not insulted. In fact, she laughs. Yes, of course I am. I'll probably die in this mud. I don't care. I was given a job by Haven and I will serve. What sort of tales could you tell? Oh, Prince, you are far too busy for my rambling stories. I was here during the calamity. I saw the slow decay, the panics, the ambushes of our soldiers. And then the retreat. Tell me more about the calamity. She sighs. Ah, the crops were rotting. Our luck was sour. The Ukatish were rising against us, timid at first, but then more confident. We had no idea why. It just happened. One day, all was well. The next day, she shakes her head. How did it end? Your mother gave the word. The problem was too big, too mysterious. 
She was a young queen. Too many wars, too many calls for her resources. We couldn't defend Sacramentum. We left a skeleton force to defend what we could. We left. I left. And now we are back. I won't dwell on those memories. I serve the queen. I serve you. We won't be thrown out again. Did Jeremiah Bushwick arrive safely? Yes, he did. Finally. I'm not letting him out of the gates. He's already tried to escape four times. The next time he tries, I'll break his knees. She's probably joking. You don't need to be able to walk to be a sage. Maybe she's not joking. <laughs> oh, he was babbling something about wanting to talk to you if you have time to speak with him. Do you have any advice for me? Oh, Prince, it's not my place to give advice to royalty. I'm too old to play politics. I just want to run my fort. I'm spending my days ordering your soldiers and nights talking to the Ukatish. Who can give me advice? Prince Sutter already sent someone with that specific job. General Ajax back at the Meyerfangs, waiting for orders, orders for what to do with your soldiers. Of course, he can only guide you. There are meetings only you can have and decisions only you can make. How are your relations with the Ugatish? Awkward. The Isaac clan is being very helpful. They think our return will make them rich. They're probably right. The Ukatish to the north have more to lose from our return. I suspect you'll have to show them some strength to enter their lands. That's not advice, just an observation. I have another question. How can I make uh, Chief Clive sits at her desk shuffling papers, writing letters, and giving orders? The muddy, worn-down state of the fort is a personal offense to her when she plans to correct with ruthless efficiency. How can I make this fort stronger? Chief Clive gives you... Chief Clive gives you a predatory grim. Ah, Prince. It is now my sworn duty to make requests. For the good of the fort and haven, after all. Not far from here is Foundry Clive, an excellent place for the Ukatish to process iron ore for us. However, our scouts say there are some pests in it. If you can reclaim it, we can make more iron for you. Foundry Clive, that's your name. She laughs. I met your mother, you know. When she visited, not too long after I took this post, I took her to where we were building this new foundry. My own project. I was passionate about it. The queen noticed it and she jokingly called it Foundry Clive. When she left, my workers would call it nothing else. The name stuck. I didn't want it to, but it did. What sort of pests are there? They said they saw giant slithering pools of swamp muck. <clears throat> Outside of their usual expertise, if they were gone, we could retake the place easily. Sorry if I'm a little talking through my nose and stuff. I'm pretty blocked up sinus-wise. Because it's raining a lot here. And the season changed to spring. Kind of has my allergies going wild. Why don't your soldiers take care of it? Hmm. Well, remember, West Battalion only has 300 soldiers, and they spread thinner every day. The general won't spare soldiers to enter tunnels and fight mysterious magic. They're just soldiers, after all. They don't have your equipment or training. Um, that's all. Haven is back. Scroll of Life. Uh, I'll go ahead and take that. Um, let me go upstairs. Chef. Chef Ina. I do my best. These quarters have been set aside for you. You can use the bed to rest and pass time. I am a sage. Uh, wasn't there someone in here, though? Oh, it was Chief Clive. Um... Yeah, let's head up. Talk to Chef Ina. Fort's cook, a plump middle-aged woman, whisks something white in a bowl. She hums happily to herself. Her floral apron is stainless like the rest of her kitchen. When she sees you, she stops whisking only long enough to curtsy. I'm Chef Ina, Prince. I will be at your service shortly. This is delicate and can't be delayed. What are you making? Meringues. Our soldiers love them. A simple recipe, but tricky. Why is the recipe tricky? Her eyes light up at your interest. It's all technique. Only three ingredients. Must be whipped and baked perfectly, or all you have is a pasty mess. She carries the giant bowl to waiting sheets of iron and hurriedly portions out dollops of the stuff. When the trays are filled, she rushes, rushes toward a hot oven. Can I taste that? Of course. She definitely produces a small clean spoon, dips it in the frothy white mixture and proudly hands it to you with a wide smile. It tastes of very sweetness and sophistication, like home. Can I have something to take with me? Ah, my prince can have all, if that is your wish. 
But this, she lifts the bowl. It must be baked to be portable, and the baking takes hours. She makes an apologetic shrug. With a sigh, you let it go. You have too much work, so you leave disappointed. All right. Marlings are tricky. Report on the Ukatish today. For all their dirt, mud, and seeming simplicity, the Ukatish are not poor. Their fine iron crafts sell well throughout Haven and the known lands. When Haven was in power, the Ukatish kept their independence by making sure a portion of their best weapons went to our empire. However, they have never forgotten the crimes committed against them. The Ukatish people are consumed with hatred and fear of outsiders. They never forgive a slight, no matter how old. The kings and queens of the Ukatish and the home warren feed and exploit this rage to keep control. When Haven was a force on Sacramentum, the Ukatish fought to keep us out of their lands. Haven's mages and trained soldiers easily defeated the Ukatish swamp runners and forced the swamps to be open for travel and trade. The Ukatish hate and fear Haven, but not as much as they do the Vol or Ariel. We might be able to deal peacefully with the Ukatish, but they might they will be sensitive to any slight. I would not eat a Myrabor. Treaty of Vassalage between Haven and the Ukatish, year 457. Here is outlined the vassalage contract between the mighty empire of Haven and the humble Ukatish between King Kale of Haven and Queen Tree of the 37th of the Ukat. Uh, we read this already. But, just in case. Jeremiah Bushwick has settled into his office in Fort Muck headquarters. He's surrounded by scrolls and books, few related to his actual job as sage, all brought out here by him. He rises and kneels when you enter. Prince, I have to thank you again for saving my life. I hope that I can be useful to you here. Studying Sacramentum has occupied much of my life. I'm so happy to be out here at last. Have you recovered from your adventure with the Myrlings? Oh, of course. Those simple creatures were not difficult to evade, especially with my magical abilities. It also gave me an excellent chance to observe them, their odd spirit and their lack of intelligence. Did they injure you? No, although I did bruise my knee on a stool when running through that ruined farmhouse. Huh. Their lack of intelligence? Don't let their human aspect fool you. They are almost entirely mindless. However, they are unnerving mimics. They imitate human behavior. Their utterances and actions sometimes lull human prey into a sense of complacency, giving the Myrlings a chance to strike. Where did Myrlings come from? Nobody knows. The suspicion is that they are made by a mad Ariel mage. That does tend to be the way of things on Sacramentum. They were made in the Ariel, but most of them migrated to the Ukat long before Haven came. The swamp suits them better. They prefer it for some reason. I have another question. Jeremiah Bushwick continues to chat with you, but he keeps being distracted by scrolls or jobs undone or weird theories that occur to him out of nowhere. Occasionally, you manage to keep him on track for a minute or two. You are the sage here. That is a job I volunteered for. It was necessary to get a berth on one of the first ships back to Haven. What is your job? Officially, I am the sage. I keep records, send out orders, maintain the history of the battalion, occasionally trade with the simple Ukatish folk. I've been doubling as quartermaster until General Ajax can spare a proper one. Fortunately, none of this takes long, so I can still spend time on my true work. Remind I meet some of these humble Ukatish folk. Oh, they're everywhere, trudging through the mud and looking for things to be insulted by. Don't expect to work with them much, though. You are a prince, after all. They will be scared of you. It's probably your lot in life to learn most by speaking to the rich and powerful, who, of course, know very little. I could use some supplies. Jeremiah looks you over. You're a prince, though. Everything you're already using is far, far better than anything we have for our soldiers. That's all for now, thanks. <coughs> um, his sleeping quarters. Uh, oh, I wanted to edit party and create an Ukatish that inflicts bleeding. Um, let's see. It's a pretty good Ukatish. Um, let's go with that one. Hair color. 
look, it's fine. Extra details. Little scar, I guess. And her name will be... We have Lauren, Terrence, Elspeth, and me. Who's she going to replace, though, I wonder? Maybe Terrence. Um... Sashilia, Sashil, Sashel, Sashel. Uh, let's go ahead and put her in the party for um, maybe for Terrence. Let's go ahead and try this. her she has 12 point points to spread let's check out our cultural abilities steel darts fires darts in a cone-shaped area doing physical damage and causing bleeding barbed lance costs one energy fire a lance at a single foe doing damage and causing heavy bleeding vicious strikes passive always active gives all allies a 10 percent chance to cause bleeding with their attacks point two increases chance by 10 percent let's get that um Causing heavy bleeding. Let's get that. Inflicts three more turns of bleeding. Uh, let's get steel darts. Does 10% more damage and two more turns of bleeding. Um, more healing. Let's get that. She would need um, fire and cry healing. Level 2 healing, um, curing, uh, I wouldn't mind giving her 5, uh, teleport 1 character, and then she definitely learned healing wave, and heals by 10%, so that would be her, uh, she's not equipped, so let's go ahead and edit party, Lauren and Aunt Terrence. I mean, we like Terrence, so I don't know. Uh, but Terrence doesn't have any cultural abilities, being just a Havenite. Um, this character can't equip this tier of physical armor. Oh. No combat skill. Huh. So let's not get the second tier of that. Oh, we can actually get a bonus of speed. Let's go ahead and get... stats 15 physical 7 magical great evasion why is her evasion so high oh being a support character hmm Elspeth is very uh, reliable and necessary Parents pretty much have the same abilities, except no cultural abilities. Um, Terrence is going to have to take a rest for a bit for Lauren. You know what? Let's remove, let's add Patricia and level her up. She has five points to spend. Um... Build construct, creates a construct to fight you at a space you select. Uh, fireball does considerable magic damage in a circular area. Shockwave damages and stun enemies in a cone shaped area. Ooh, it's shockwave. Let's get construct. Um, three free points. Let's go ahead and get. 
Fire and Cry. Um, and just for now, like a curing and fireball. You can always switch those abilities later. Lauren, back to the party. All right, so. That's going to be our party, I think, for now. Me and three girls. I love it. Um, Alright, so... We have to set out and explore. Let's see. There we go. There's our UCAT report. Look at the iron. 30% theft chance, though. We have to go and mitigate that. Ah, uh, we got that from the vault. Still got okay resources. We should be great. Yep, wow. We have three iron to play with. Two quicksilver. And we lost 100 gold. Ouch. Oh, that was for, um... What was that for? Paying back the, uh... Right, birch. And those that deserted because they were paid for those that mutinied. Under five coins, though, not bad. Um, let's go ahead and build another smithy here. I think. We build it right here. Orders, Prince? Well, my orders are going to be by a smithy, I think. That's F3. How much time have we been playing? 31 minutes. Okay, we have time. Um... Yeah, we have plenty of upkeep. Four iron. Wow. Plenty of room to maneuver here. Um, first of all, let's go ahead and get a smithy. And put it here. And let's see the new stuff we can buy at the smithy. You can also turn excess equipment into gold, and you can buy fine new weapons and armor. Um, arcane weapons. Okay, we can get an arcane dagger now. Plus 20% to crit chance and an empty slot. Oh my gosh, we're getting into some cool stuff. Um, 20% to crit damage, wow. Okay, um, regular weapon, get an iron dagger, 10% speed bonus, a folded steel rapier with two augment slots, and an iron spear, which does massive damage with the cleave as well, 25% chance, and an augment slot for moons. Uh, I like our spear better though. Uh, the folded steel rapier. You have an iron REL dagger. Um, folded steel, I think, is a must for me. But we're down to so low coins. Dang, what happened to all our money? Uh, well, this is great that we have this smithy. Um, we can get into studded leather, which is nice. Iron scale armor, which is nice. Two augment slots. Uh, steel chain helm. Bronze salad. Okay. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and... Huh, this looks like a small plot of land. Wood. Okay, let's see. We've got two iron. Two quicksilver is our main thing. Can't buy an apothecary? Oh, we don't have three wood. Wood is getting scarce. 
can't buy a barracks or a guard tower because of lack of wood. Okay, so I've got to travel back and get some wood from Havenlands. This is awesome. You can also sell stone to pick up some gold. Um, but materials arrived yet? Not yet. Export some supplies. Stone, 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 stone. Let's see what our stone looks like. How do I check that again? Oh, 32. We should be fine to sell more. I need... Okay, we picked up some gold. Can't get wood yet. Uh, we'll have to make a special order for wood. Let's go ahead and head to... Um, back to Fort Mock. And head to the smithy. Let's outfit some stuff here. Um, weapon. Two augmentation slots so we can put plus one to magical damage. No. Plus one to fizz. We can put the crushing rune in it. Just currently nowhere. Um, you know what? I should have stayed back in Haven lands. Let's go visit the Haven. Fort Haven blacksmith. Down here. Okay. Um. Oh, they do magical damage. Wait. Note that arcane weapons do magical damage, but they can only be used by characters who have trained in magic spells. Okay. Oh, let me go see what augments I have in storage. Portal has a message. Someone's down there. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> Where is my... Huh, where's my plus two to physical? Damn it, rune. I thought it was in the spear. I sold the spear with the crushing rune in it, didn't I? Ah, uh, big mistake. Big mistake. Anyway, um, let's get a physical damage out. Let's get a magical damage out. Let's get a physical damage out. Um, let's get a curse rune out. Another physical, a staunching, and a blessing duration. <clears throat> now, let's talk to Stonehouse. It's your command with this familiar combination of fatigue and disdain. Someone's waiting at the palace. Someone is waiting for you in Miranda's office. There's some issue that requires your judgment. Thank you, Prince. With your permission, I'll go off and have my daily cry. It's F3 here. See how long we've been playing. 39 minutes. We can check the portal message. Ouch! It's Sutter's voice. Sorry, I'm being fitted for a formal gown during this. Hope you don't mind. I hear you're having some success, success, brother. More fort than Sacramentum. <clears throat> it has been difficult, but I've managed. Of course. With three fine battalions at your disposal, how could you not? Mother set you up very well, I think. Which is good. You have the other forts to attend to. Um. 
Um, what if there's another calamity? Then we will be prepared for it. <clears throat> we'll find out who created it. We will destroy them. Avenge the great defeat our mother suffered. She will reward you for it well. So build the final forts. There's just one thing you absolutely must remember. What is that? You absolutely must. Whatever you do. Ow! Jab me with the needle again and I'll have you banished. Let me see that. Sutter drags the tailor away from the portal and is gone. Huh. Interesting. Oron is here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save and we'll deal with Oron and Miranda next time. want to thank you for joining me. Very exciting stuff going on. I do hope you're enjoying it as much as I am, which is a lot. <laughs> great, great masterpiece of a game. Really loving it. Hope you guys are too. Much love, peace, and joy, guys. Take care. And uh, much more to come. Stay tuned.